بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول كريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله بريز الله سبحانه وتعالى أسمع سين بيس إن بلسين وهيز بلاف إن أبلاف سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم we're up to the continuing just last session we started the chapter on salat the virtues of salat and now this is of course al musawwa the sharh muwatta Imam Malik the collection of hadith Imam Malik رحم الله so Imam Malik for those who might not have been here before, the Muatta Imam Malik, basically all the books of Hadith after it sort of like are in its orbit, right? Even It's actually quite early. It beats other books because Imam Malik was so early. Plus it's a fiqh book and a Hadith book and it um, holds the fiqh of the people of Medina and the fuqaha, the jurists of Medina Munawwara. So... Like Imam Hanifa Rahmullah, the Imam Mu'lama of the Hanafi Mazhab, they say that the Imam Abu Hanifa school is a collective ijtihad. It's Imam Hanifa is the Imam of the Madhab of the school. But then there's a council of ulama that oversaw his students and uh, like Imam Abu Yusuf, they were mujtahids in their own rights. Right? They were great scholars in their own right. So, you know, they uh, created a school, a Madhab, that was coherent and systematic. In So basically their frameworks for practicing the Quran and Sunnah and applying in all cases in a systematic way as opposed to a haphazard way. Um, so the ishtihad was, a, but Imam Malik's school also is not to be, it's in Madinah Munawar, there are great Imams. So he, Muatta was presented as mentioned in the introduction to this book to 70 or 40, the most senior ulama of Madinah Munawara. And they signed off on it that this represents a fiqh of Medina, and lived in, is the grandkid children of Sahaba still part of that society. Freed slaves of Sahaba radiallahu anhu, like, so it's a collective, you could say, fiqh memory of a whole city, right? So reading the chapter on Adhan is an example. Adhan is like, you know, if you grow up, let's say in South Africa, you grow up in Pakistan, you heard the Adhan that your parents made, your grandparents made, you know? So when somebody says, what is the Adhan, right? Your brain, your mind's not going, just in our own experience, it's going to the Adhan that you heard your whole life. I mean, in Australia, we hear it out of Muslim pro or whatever. But over there, you hear it on speakers. You heard it in your village for generations, or your parents heard it, grandparents. And if there was any change, everybody would know about it. So it's, if there was any, if someone did something, then people, the society would know. Everyone, no, 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 this is like one of the Khalifas. He tried to put the Eid. When's the Eid khutbah? Before Salat, after Salat? After Salat. In Juma, it's, it's before, then it's Salat. But in Eid, it's after. And uh, it's uh, the salat is uh, for s- most imams it's sunnah in the Hanafi fiqh is wajib but the khutbah is not to attend to so what he did was to engineer it uh, he put the, he swapped the rank because nobody is st- they didn't want to listen to him so he made uh, so they would leave, get up they would pray the salat and go home they don't want to listen to him so what he did was he swapped it around there was objections imams and hadith muhadisin said no no this is not the right way to do it what I'm saying is that people try to change it especially things that are in recent memory one or two generations, they're very hard to, no, no, this is what we've been doing and is well known and great scholars have taught us this in the last generation, two generations. So Imam Malik is like very early on. Because of that, everything he says, we can, like uh, Shah Waliullah, the commentator on this he, from India 250 years ago, he said, we can disagree with Imam uh, Sh- uh, Malik rahmullah, on his istimbatat, what he derived, his masail, but we cannot disagree with his hadith. And they are actually a, a, a source of law for not just uh, Maliki Mazhab, but also the other, four, the other three Madahib as well. So Imam Malik narrated, who narrated from Yahya bin Sa'id, that he said that the Rasulullah Sallallahu that he wanted to take two pieces of wood and by them hit uh, them together, strike them together, uh, sort of like a drum, strike them together to inform the people uh, about Salat, meaning to tell them about Salat. This is before the Adhan. Then Abdullah ibn Zayd al Ansari, um, uh, then like he was co- connected to this tribe, uh, uh, Bani, from the tribe, the clan of Haris ibn Khazraj, uh, he saw the two pieces of wood in his dream, and he said, "Are these?" He heard, uh, or he he- said, "Are these the one that Rasul some intend by it?" And then someone said to him that, "Will you not call the people to pray, make adhan for the prayer?" So he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi when he woke up, after he woke up, he came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mentioned this to him, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered the Adhan. Now, there are different variations, this is the revise of Muatta, 
there's a dream that with all, all the words of the Adhan is there and so forth. But it doesn't take away from the meaning that this is this Sahabi, Abdullah bin Zayd, uh, Ibn Zayd, radiallahu anhu, not a very well-known Sahabi, but till Qiyamah, you know, uh, these are every masjid, every place in the world, in every country in the world. The words that were shown to him are the words and all the act of Adhan uh, that he gave his opinion. And I, I believe that Umar radiallahu anhu also saw the dream, but he came afterwards. And he beat him, uh, he beat him uh, uh, to it. But anyway, I mean, this is Allah's grace, whoever he gives to. Uh, the virtues of Adhan. Mamalik narrated. Now, we have sort of an Adhan routine here. And uh, we know who the Muaddins are, so... Don't start fighting. When there's, a, there's no Muazzins, then we can apply this. Um, it may be far away, but I'm saying like everybody now wants to become a Muazzin after we read this chapter. The virtues of Adhan. Imam Malik narrated from Abu Zinad, who narrated from A'raj, from who narrated from Abu Huraira, that Rasulullah said, when, uh, uh, when, it, the, when you, we, the call is made for Salat, shaitan flees, like he runs away, and passing wind. I mean, it like shocks him to the system as running away he's passing wind um, and when the adhan is finished he comes back when iqama is called same thing happened and he runs away and when it finishes he comes back and then he comes and he uh, incites thoughts uh, in the person in the uh, being of the person in the, uh, he, he whispers to the person and he, uh, he goes and he says to him remember such and remember such and until that he keeps doing this to him, until he forgets how much he's praying. So, interesting that Adhan is, in terms of shaitan, that it makes the shaitan flee. But Salat, which is the, what the Adhan is for, the shaitan comes back and he's... Uh, uh, um, uh, so we have to fight that battle uh, with ourselves and shaitan. And you remember all sorts of things. You know, I heard, I heard this, I'm not, I, I, I heard it in a talk. That uh, someone lost their wallet, came to Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah and said, I've lost my wallet, and I can't remember where I left it. He said, This is not like a, this is not a fiqh, like a question, you know, like Islamic jurisprudence question. He said, Start praying, make intent to pray the whole night. And he came back, he goes, As soon as I started salat, I remember where it was. He goes, Yeah, of course, shaitan is not going to let you pray, he's not going to let you pray salat the whole night. So he, 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 he does a, cost benefit analysis, you know, like, a, All right, look, I've stressed this guy enough, made him forget. This is not worth it. This is not worth it. You start making du'as, Ya Allah, uh, you know, every time that something slip up, Ya Allah, forgive all the Ummah of Rasulullah, you know, Ya Allah, forgive the whole Ummah of Rasulullah for this act. Ya Allah, the thing that shaitan hates, because he's, you know, so if you, Ya Allah, guide the whole humanity. He won't, next time, he won't bother you too much. So we have to, we have, this is the fight, right? This is a fight with him. So he will, he will do this. So, um, so Azan is so powerful that it, it makes the uh, shaitan um, shaitan flee. Um, Malik narrated that, and from the Sumay, the freed slave of Abu Bakr ibn Abdul Rahman, uh, who narrated from uh, uh, Abu Salih as saman who narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu So you notice the chains of Imam Malik are very short. There's only like two, three people on it usually. Um, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, if the people knew what was in the Adhan and in the first Saf, then you will not find any space like you will not have the opportunity except by drawing lots. Like basically you have to have some sort of lottery system to get a spot in the front of the mosque. If they knew the reward of it, if they understood the reality of the reward in the first saf, in the first row of salat, and also uh, if they knew the reward of adhan um, at the beginning of the hadith, then they would actually draw lots for it. They will actually fight for it. Um, so this is, there's a lot uh, on offer. So for adhan and for the, saf, the first saf uh, of the uh, salat. The description of Adhan in Iqam, Imam Malik narrated from his uncle, Abu Suhail, who nar- bin Malik, who narrated from his father, uh, who narrated, and he said, I don't know of anything, um, uh, who narrated from his father, that I don't recognize anything from the people except for the Adhan uh, for the Salat. Meaning things have changed so much in the, the way things have changed, that the only thing that I find that is what was there before is Adhan. And he said that um, Yahya said that Imam Malik was asked about rep- repeating in the Adhan and Yaqama. Uh, he goes, I have not found in it except for what I found the people upon, meaning the previous generation, uh, in the Adhan and Yaqama. And um, in Yaqama, there's no repetition. So this, uh, um, and this is what we found, uh, and the people of our land continue to be on this. So in Medina Munawwara. There is a masala here, which is that 
is there a repetition for the Mu'addin in the Shahadatayn specifically? So in the Maliki school, the, the Mu'addin repeats what he says. And the second masala is about repetition. So we know that in the Shafi, Hanbali, and so forth, in madhabs, there's no repetition in the Iqama. It's not the same as the Adhan. Right? If you take the Qadqama, the Salah out, some sure in the Hanafi madhab, the Hanafi school, it's the same as the Adhan plus Qadqama, the Salah. Um, so, but Shawlullah says regarding uh, the second masala, that the majority of the people of knowledge are that Iqama should be majority. He's a Hanafi alim. Shawlullah is very interesting. He doesn't have any bias. He's a Hanafi scholar, great Hanafi scholar. Uh, but, like, but he has no bias. And he mentioned the majority of the people knowledge say that Iqamah should be singular. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shalla ilaha illa Shalla Muhammad Rasulullah, Haila Sahil Falaq, Qadqam, Salla Qadqam, Salla, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, except for Qadqamah, this Allah should be repeated. So, so there's a thing called Tarjeeh, which is repeating the Shahada uh, again uh, by the Mu'addin. Shafi'i said that it should be done, while Imam Hanifa says it should not be done, the Adhan. And the Iqamah is, according uh, Imam Hanifa, Rahmullah, is double. Uh, it's repeated, like as I explained. Um, the entry, putting a salatu khayra minawm for the azan of fajr, uh, it is mustahab to do so. Imam Malik narrated that he's reaching that the Mu'addin came to Umar bin Khattab um, and he did the adhan uh, for fajr and then he found him asleep. And he said, uh, a salatu khayra minawm, he said, sleep is, uh, salat is better than sleep. Ya Amirul Mu'mineen. And so Umar radiallahu anhu said, make this put this in the Adhan, uh, say that in the Adhan. And upon this is the majority of people's knowledge. The, there's other hadith related to this as well. Um, and this is Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Like there's some people that have a sickness, um, they, there's one person, because in this masjid, like for example in Taraweeh, we do 20. Umar radiallahu anhu instituted, the Ummah has done it 1400 years. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, follow my sunnah, sunnah al khulafa rashidin the things that are instituted, and that's where it cuts off the four, four khalifas. Because they knew what Rasulullah wanted and what was revealed to him, and they knew how certain things they knew that had to be applied in a timely manner. And the, the Sharia is what Allah has revealed to you. The Deen is what Allah revealed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, namely in the Quran Sunnah. But the people who understood it were the people in front of him, and among them there were different people at different levels of knowledge. One of the greatest fuqaha of this Ummah and probably the greatest faqih of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, is Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. So. In this mosque, I don't make a debate over 8 and 20 rakat as an example. I don't make like issue. But I encourage people to do 20 because the Khatam Qur'an is in 20. In this masjid, for more than, alhamdulillah, without break, more than 30, 35 years nearly. We have a continuous, every year, we have a complete reading of the whole Qur'an. All right? But we do it in 20 rakat. Other mosques might do it in 8 rakat. But if you leave at 8 or 10 or 12 or 14, you're not going to get the Khatam in Salat. So you have the opportunity to pray behind a half of the Qur'an who's memorized the Qur'an, every day he reads the Qur'an to keep his hips, to keep his Qur'an. It's not an easy job. It's first three, four, five years commitment to memorize it and then to maintain it for the rest of your life. I asked Hafiz Ahmad, I said, how do you keep it? He said, I have to read it every day one juz or I have to um, uh, listen to it. If I'm exhausted, I still have to listen to recording so I don't forget. So that's, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. All, he's doing all the work. Right? In Taraweeh, he's doing, we just have to stand behind and listen. But what was offensive was actually, and upset some people here, what I was saying that, but you're going outside standing, you're made having a smoke and a coffee. Standing and having coffee while Quran is being read. This is disrespectful to Quran when the Quran is being read. That's what I was talking about. I didn't bother, I'm not, I'm not on the business, trying to convince people. Umar Adilana did it, for me it's uh, good enough. And for most Muslims and scholars and throughout history, majority, it's good enough. There's a small batch. Uh, some, a, few, a few scholars from Saudi Arabia and now from the Middle East sort of spread. But historically, it's like 99% of scholars of any word, they're on the view to pray 20. But I don't debate that issue because this person came to me and he said, uh, you know, you were talking about 8 and 20. I said, I never talked about 8. I talked about 20. That's what we do in our mosque. If you want to get the khatam, the complete recite, listen to the whole Quran from beginning till end. In 27 days, we read. And I encourage here in this mosque to do it in 29 days. Don't insist on making the khatam on 27 days. You know, because at 27 days, then people cycle it. They say, oh, 27 is Laylatul Qadr. It's not just about completing Quran. This is their belief that it's a 27. Therefore, the next two days, it's Eid started early, you know, for them. So, but I, I encourage, I've been telling them for two, three years, that read till the 29th. Don't read till uh, on the 27th. Don't make, don't be fixated on the 27th for khatam. But anyway, this guy comes to me uh, in another mosque and he said he was here in Juma. I don't know who he is. I don't know his name. 
But he said, you know, to, I said I never talked about Aiden Tony. I don't debate that issue because people are, you know, fall on this argument. Uh, some say this is eight, some say it's twenty. I said I don't make a big issue, but I said I'm talking about our mosque, what we do here. Then he said, I said, well, if you want to argue the point, we know what the books say. The Umar said it was twenty, fixed it, and to, from that time till now, this is how the Ummah's done it. And then, you know, it came. This is when the problem when he crossed the lines. He's Umar Adilana made a mistake. He made a mistake. Your mist- I mean, like I said, mate, if you got, if you have, if you don't have respect for Sahaba, Khulafa Rashidin Umar Adilana, I'm gonna I'm gonna because this is like, this is like out of line. I said, Salam alaikum. He said, as I was walking away, he said, you're running away. I said, I'm got time for this. Salam alaikum. I'm going. And then he said that you're, uh, you're, you got a very sharp tongue. So he's trying to get me, but didn't get me. Alhamdulillah, kept on going. The point being, when Amir al-Mu'min, Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, when he instituted some things, this is based on what Rasulullah Sallam thought of him. They're not making their own sharia. That, that this is a time, that this is, there's certain things that were instituted. The ummah, like, and then, when the, and then furthermore, there's another thing in the Islamic sharia, it's called cons- ijma', consensus. Ijma' is when the whole ummah, a generation of scholars, this is very hard to do now. To agree, everybody agrees in the whole world. All the scholars in the world agree. You know, there's a there's a certain. It was very early in Islam for a very short amount of period of time when all the, agree. Because Rasulullah SAW said, "My Ummah will never agree on misguidance." So all the scholars in a generation agreed that is law till Qiyamah. So there's those things as well. When Sahaba when Umar al instituted something, there's there's you know there's objections can be raised. Like Umar al fixed mahr. Right? He kept the mahar because mahar was too much. Right? The mahar was exorbitant, so he kept it. We're getting Australia, certain nationalities in the 100,000, 100 plus thousand mahar uh, there is there. Then they wonder, those communities, why the daughters can't get married. But anyway, um, the. And the countries that have very low mahar. Uh, as one sheikh said to me from one country, because the mahar is low in this country, but don't think the women in this country are cheap. You know, so one senior alim said that he said they don't. The mahar is low, but don't. Uh, people should not think that the uh, the the women of this country are cheap. But anyway, um, and then the lady stood up from the back. The old lady stood up. He said, Allah says in the Quran to give them a good amount. O oh, Umar, who are you to fix it? Who are you to cap it? That's Sahaba radiallahu anhu. He said the women know more than Umar. And he removed that law. He was a Khalif, Amir al Armies are in three continents under his command. Right? They, and, and a lady from the back in Jummah, she corrected him. He made a law as a Amir She said, Allah says, give them a good amount. Who are you to put a cap on? And he said, and he said, when he used to read a verse of Quran to him, he said, he like, on a certain issue, his whole, his whole body is to calm, like, like, a, like he would submit to the ayat of the Qur'an. He would not go beyond that. That's Umar radiallahu anhu. So these people knew the sharia. They knew. And sometimes it is, happens a situation where there's some sahabis heard it from Rasulullah and then they're narrating it to another sahabi who didn't hear it. And then they retract because they were following they, what they thought was the right understanding. But when they heard it, and you see Abdullah bin Masood is like one of the hap- what, you, what, what made him happy? That he p- passed a fatwa because he didn't have the information. And when the hadith was narrated, it was according to his fatwa. Like that was like a joy because he matched with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi without knowing what Rasulullah Sallallahu said. So it's, it's um, so anyway, so this is, um, and, and upon this, Shah Walilullah said, Alayhi Akthur Ahli, the majority of people's knowledge are con- according to this. Man salla fi bayt jamaat takfiya liqama, qali yahya su'ila malik, malik, Imam Malik was asked about a people that, uh, so this is um, fiqhi masala, that uh, uh, he was asked that people who um, they want to, make jama'ah of the far salat and they make iqama but not adhan and he goes this will suffice uh, because adhan is wajib in the masjid for jama'at uh, in which people gather it's not wajib in the houses actually you should not be giving adhan in the house especially in muslim countries where there's a neighborhood because masjids are like even in leicester you know subhanallah sheikh ibrahim is here he did uh, the juma last week and uh, he um, from leicester he says 15 masjids in walking distance from him in Leicester, UK. Uh, 15 masjids walking distance from his house. Because we were down in the, the Grand Mosque 
And I said the Grand Mosque is, uh, should be called, you know, the Melbourne Grand Mosque down in the south, south uh, Point Cook or wherever it is. I said this should be called. I didn't realise how far it was because I had to take him from Doncaster there. And I, realized, I, put, I put GPS one hour and it, it was late for the program. There. They had to wait for the so, delay the Salat. And um, I said this should be called almost Geelong, uh, almost to Geelong, the Grand Mosque. You know, it's almost, whereas it was more than halfway to Geelong. But anyway, um, so I, I was there because there's a few big, big mosques very close to each other. He said, oh, there's another masjid. Um, uh, I said, where's Taqwa, like in relation to this place? He said, oh, it's three kilometers or something like that. There's another masjid that's three kilometers. Oh, I said, just up the road. And he said to me, he goes, you guys have a wrong perception of distance in Australia. Like, uh, <laughs> you, got, you got an incorrect perception. Because three kilometers is not up the road. And I said, well, for us, for us, uh, it's up, uh, up the road. So people that pray jamaat, uh, back to the masala, that uh, people who pray jamaat, they should not, um, they should not. So, they, because the adhan calls to the masjid for the jamaat of the masjid. The qama is after the jamaat is established and like people are gathered and so forth is to start the salat, commence the salat. But adhan is done outside. Iqama is done inside. Adhan is done outside to call the neighborhood. So you should not be calling away from the masjid. If you're doing another adhan, that means you're calling people away from the masjid. Right? So you should be calling. So therefore, the, uh, it's wajib for the, uh, for the masjid. I say, Shabulillah says in his commentary, this, upon this is Imam Hanifa and the apparent school of Imam Shafi'i, uh, that it's sunnah for them, um, uh, that it's sunnah uh, for them, this is, a, sorry, this is, this is a Imam, he doesn't agree with Imam Mali, it's sunnah for the adhan qamat is equal uh, for them to do it as well. Allah alam, if there's no masjid nearby, as far, what I understand was that if he's in the neighborhood, then it's different. But if it's another area where there is no jamaat, there's no masjid, then for them they call adhan. And then the next hadith will uh, explain that. Imam uh, Malik narrated from Abdurrahman Abdullah, the, uh, the son of Abdurrahman ibn Abi Sa'as al Ansari. Then uh, also he was a Mazini and Abi who narrated from his father that he informed him that Abu Sayyidina Khudr said, um, I, like, I see that you love sheep. Uh, goats and uh, the countryside right uh, if you are because he's a shepherd so you seem to hang around with sheep and uh, uh, sorry goats like he's a shepherd so and uh, you love the countryside um, if you are there in the countryside make adhan for salat and raise your voice in the adhan um, no, nothing hears the the sound of the muaddin like as far, the extent of the adhan the sound that travels, because you do it loud, it goes further, right? No jinn, no human being, no thing that is there, he is except that will bear witness for you on the Day of Judgment, that he made adhan. Abu Sa'id um, uh, said, I heard this from Rasulullah Sallallahu and Shawulullah said, and upon this are the people of knowledge, that they love, they consider that mustahab, that is rewarded, because in in, in compliance with the order of Rasulullah to raise the voice for Adhan as much as possible. Um, and Imam Shafi said, um, except for uh, except for in a masjid that in which there is jama'ah. So this is like, yeah. So if you're in a masjid or if your neighborhood masjid, then you do it according to the neighborhood, right? Like you don't have to scream at the top of your lungs. Uh, you do as much as what is needed there, but as for, but according to others, no, there should be. Uh, it is better uh, to raise the voice regardless. Allah Taala Alam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us understanding and to, to, to practice. Now, if you're in a workplace, uh, let's say you're on a plane, you start starting, you start sh- shouting Allahu Akbar uh, on an airplane. So I'm not responsible for that. Uh, <laughs> the Imam told us to uh, you start starting takbir Allahu Akbar on planes. Um, it's nice knowing you, <laughs> uh, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. Uh, so you, you have to weigh it up. And like, uh, there was a brother, he used to ride, uh, he was a tram driver in Melbourne. I know him personally. So he used to stop his tram no matter what, we have to pray salat. Do azan, put the prayer man in front of the tram, do azan at the top of his lungs, uh, and then uh, pray. I'm not sure how long he lasted as a tram driver, but uh, he, they, there are people like, mashallah, they salat, they jamaat, um, their hearts are in the masjid. You know, and the hearts are with Salat and Adhan. So we should um, make it a point, even if you do in a low voice, in special areas like here, because we're all so far away from Masjid anyway. Nobody in our building or house, if you're doing Salat, then we're very far from the Masjid. But if you're in the immediate neighborhood of the Masjid, that's a different story. 
uh, then you're sort of calling people away from the Jamaat. Wallahu ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and tawfiq to uh, practice. Shallow, we'll continue with Adhan next week.